everybody. This is Shauna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy. Welcome to lesson number two. In this lesson, we're going to work on resolving the confusion of B, D, P, and Q. And we'll also have a focus on the letter I, making the sound I. Let's set up the table. You'll need your top 160 sight word list and the sight word study method instruction sheet. When it comes to materials, you will need the sight words that you gave the student in the last lesson, some markers and a highlighter, and then you'll need some blank cards for the new words that you're going to give out today. Moving on to the short vowel drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheet and the keyword pictures for the student, apple, eddy, itchy, olive, up, and the keyword sentence as well. Then we'll move on to the phonemic awareness drill where you'll need some colored tiles or whatever materials you're using for that one. Then we have the visual and auditory drill. You'll need your card pack of consonants and vowels for that. Then we have the blending drill and that's where you use the paper letter cards. Refer to your lesson plans so you know the order to put your words in for that drill. Then we've got the magnetic letter tile reading and spelling drills. And for those two drills, we're going to use the magnetic letter tiles on a cookie sheet and we'll spread them out in a rainbow shape. The syllable pounding sheet is one that we didn't use in lesson one and we won't be using it for a while, but still keep it in the mix because eventually you'll need it right there. And we will use the new phoneme grapheme kinesthetic discovery method today. And then at the very end of the table, you're going to have the sheets that you printed out for the lesson. It was right, it was attached to the lesson plan. Let's look at what those sheets actually are. We'll teach bed in the new content part of the lesson, so you'll need that sheet. And then this is for the kinesthetic discovery method drill. This one is the word list in the reading section, the connected text for the reading section. After they read, you get to show them the pictures, which they always like. And then we have the sentences for the writing section. The only other thing you'll need is some writing implements for your student. They'll bring their book, so they should have some line paper in the book, and your lesson plan should be handy. We're going to begin with the sight word study method. It's important to individualize our teaching, so let's check in. How did it go yesterday with the sight word study method? If you felt like your student was getting overwhelmed with all the moving parts and all the different steps to the drill, it could be appropriate for you not to do the drill today. You could make the decision that you're not going to start until the student feels more confident with, with the other drills because there's so many in the lesson. And maybe you won't start until lesson number four, and that is totally okay. For those of you who are doing the sight word study method in lesson two, you are probably working on the word the, some of you would also have the word of. And there might be some of you who even got to a third word too. So at this point, we're really going to need the teacher to step in because we're all going to be at different steps here. The student will begin by reading the word on their sight word card, and they'll do that for each of their cards. And then the teacher will ask them, the teacher will have the card and the teacher will say, can you write the word the and then the student will write it on line paper in their book. And then you can give the card to the student to check so that they can do the check. If they got it correct, they can put a little check mark in the corner. Usually it takes about five checks to master a word, but it's different for everybody. And we move at the pace of the student, right? Uh, so you can do that now. And then when you're finished, if you feel like it's appropriate, appropriate to add a new sight word, do so. And you can do so. The teacher will follow the instructions listed right here. Come back to me when you're finished. Now you might be wondering what happens if a student struggles with the word when they go to write it. You could ask the student to do the sight word study method steps again. And sometimes it's a really good idea to, to look at the word and how it's created. So if we look at the word the, we can see that, you know, the student, you might never have learned that TH, this is not a T and an H, it's a TH. This is a symbol of its own and it has a sound of its own, which is V. So that's what's happening in the. And an E is allowed to make the E sound. So when we say 
the end at the end of a book, we really hear the E sound. But this is the most common word in English. And what is the sound that you actually hear when you usually say it? The. What happened there? What sound did the E make? The. It's an uh. An uh is usually made by you. Up. So this is something that is a really good thing to talk about because it comes up all the time. We are lazy speakers and we want to make things easy on ourselves. And uh is the simplest sound you can possibly make. You just open your jaw uh, and there it is. Your jaw drop, drops a little bit and you make the sound. In contrast, try and say eh like Eddie. Eh. See how that's, that's harder? I have to pull my lips back. Eh. And when I make uh, I just drop the jaw and there it is. Uh. So that happens all the time. Actually, it happened in my own name, didn't it? Sean, uh, my, my name ends in an A, but we make the, we call it a schwa. Can you say that? Schwa. There's actually a term for this laziness where we insert the uh sound everywhere. So that's what, that's what's happening. We do know that this is really the E, the end, because we say it properly sometimes, but we have to be alert that sometimes the vowels are going to, when we speak, we're going to be lazy with them and insert that uh sound, which is unfortunate for uh, when we, when we come to spelling, because it makes it so difficult. So I hope that helps. For those of you who are working on of, now, what sounds do you hear in of? Let's, uh, let's write it down as it really is and then as you hear it. So I hear two sounds in of. I hear a uh and v. Shouldn't that be how we, we spell of? But look, it just like in the word the, we schwa the o. It's an o, but we gave it the a uh sound because we're so lazy when we speak. And then why is it an f? We know the f makes f. Why, why is it sounding like v? Well, that's actually a historical story because did you know that f in the very beginning used to make f and v as it sounds? It used to have those two jobs. V entered the alphabet later on, and it took over that job of making the v sound. So that is why the second most common word in English, of, uh, has that v sound. In the, in the beginning, it would have been of. That's how we would have said it. And then over time, it became, uh, we schwad the o on it, of. Yeah, so I hope that little explanation helped you. And let's move on little sidebar for the teacher on the sight word study word list here you're keeping track and I circle in pencil the words on which the student is currently working and when they master one which means that they would get it correct um, nine times out of ten then I would highlight it and to know if I mean the student is the one who decides if that word is mastered and if, if you find out later on that that word isn't mastered as they're wor working through the lesson, uh, you can always re-add it. I take the sight words that are mastered and I put them in a little Ziploc baggie and then I poke it through the rings of the teacher binder and I keep it in the back of the teacher mind binder. Now it's time for the short vowel drill. You're going to take two fingers and you're going to trace your picture and say apple, ah. Do that five times. And then move on to Eddie, eh. And you can do all five, apple, Eddie, itchy, olive, up. And then you're going to move on to your picture. I'm not sure which one you actually chose yesterday, but whichever one you wanted to use as your sentence, uh, you can either say, sad Ed did not run, or fat ed is not up. And when you and your teacher read it, you're going to really stretch out the sounds. So it's fat ed is not up. And you can do those two activities now and then come back to me. Let's do the phonemic awareness drill. 
you're going to need your little colored tiles for this one. So can you take those out now? Okay, if you've got your tiles, I'm going to say your word is sat. So I want you to take out colored tiles to represent the sounds in sat. Do that now. Okay, now that you've got sat, can you tap it, say it, sat. Find the t in sat. Can you change the t to a new color? The new color will be n as a net. Now tap it, say it, and what is your new word? It won't be a real word. Did you get Sam? That's correct. Find the s in San. Change the s to a t. What's your new word? Tap it, say it. Did you get Tam? If you did, that's right. Find the t in tan and change it to a o. What do you have now? To find out, tap it and say it. And pause as needed. Did you get lan? That's correct, not a word on its own, but part of the word land. So you have lan. Find the n in lan and change the n to a d. What do you have now? Did you get lad? If you did, terrific. Now find the o in lad and change it to a m. What do you have? Tap it, say it. Now, teacher, if you want to do all the words there, you're welcome to. But um, just pause the video if you want to do that. Everyone else, let's keep going. We'll move on to the visual drill. So I would like you to name this letter, tell me the name of it, and tell me the sound it makes. And teacher, you can check. What's this one? Name it and tell me the sound it makes. How about this one? When we're doing this drill teacher, we want to be really careful to make sure the student is not adding the sound uh onto the different um, sounds. So this is a oh, it is not a la. And let's just try that with a different one. What's this one? Name it and then tell me the sound it makes. And this is a mmm, not a ma. Mmm. How about this one? This is a P and it makes P. It is not P. Just a little pop of it, just, the air pops out and that creates a sound just P. And that's all it is. Okay, let's move on to the auditory drills. So this is um, this one you're going to need to write. So get your pencil. And I'm going to say a sound and you're going to repeat the sound and then we'll have you write it down. Okay. Your sound is d. Can you say that? Okay, and teacher's going to correct, correct it if it was said incorrectly. And now I would like you to write the symbol that goes with the sound d. Can you do that now? It's d as in dog.
Okay, after you write it, I'd like you to underline it and say the sound again. Okay, your sound is f. Can you say that sound? Now I'd like you to write the symbol that goes with the sound as in fat. Okay, say the sound after you finish and underline it and say and your teacher can check your work. The next sound is I. Repeat the sound. Now can you write down the symbol that goes with the sound I? Let's see if you got it right. Underline it and say I. Did you get that right? And the last one is mmm. Can you say the sound? Mmm, as in mat. Mmm. What symbol goes with mmm? Write it down, and when you finish, underline it and say mmm. Let's see if you got it right. How'd you do? Okay, let's move on. Okay, teacher, you've got the blending drill ready to go, and it'll have those little paper cards with the letters on them, and I should say S-A-P as the first word. So here's what you're going to do, student. I'd like you to take two fingers, tap each card, and say the sound. Um, so S-A-P, and then underline it and blend them together and try and say the whole word. And it's okay if you have to tap it a couple times and work your speed up. Uh, people often do that. So give it a try, and when you tap the first word out and blend it together and say the whole word, it'll be time to move on to the next word, and the teacher will move one of the cards to reveal the new word. You can pause the video here and come back when you're done. So in lesson number one, we were talking about what is the difference between a consonant and a vowel. Do you remember? Tell your teacher if you do. We said that the vowels are the sounds that could go on forever if we could breathe forever in one like so ah uh, there's nothing to obstruct that sound my lips don't get in the way my teeth don't get in the way my tongue doesn't get in the way my vocal cords are vibrating so everything is open and the same with eh, eh, ah, ah. all of those are unobstructed sounds so the consonants in contrast, are all ones that are blocked in some way. So let's just take that one. B. You can see how I start with my lips closed. B. And then they open up. Um, how about f? You can see my teeth are in the way there. F, and it's all closed. F, it's motor off. F, so there's a lot going on there. Um, so that is what the, is the difference between a consonant and vowel. Can you take a minute and explain it to your teacher? What's the difference between a consonant and vowel? When you're done, I'd like you to touch each letter and you can sing the alphabet song if you want, or you could just say the names of the letters, A, B, C. Okay, can you do that now? And come back to me when you're done. Okay, now I'm gonna pull one to the middle and I'd like you to tell your teacher if it's a consonant or a vowel. So con, son, ant is a, a tough word. So why don't you try and say that with your teacher and vowel is, this, is the other word. If consonant is giving you too much trouble, you could go C or V. Is this one a consonant or a vowel? How about this one? And if it is a vowel, tell your teacher what sound you think it makes. Is it apple, eddy, itchy, olive, or up? How about this one? Is it a consonant or a vowel? What about, here's a tricky one. Oh, this one. Is that a consonant or a vowel? You might not know all the different sounds that this one can make. This is the letter Y. Sometimes it acts as a vowel and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on where it is in the word. 
when it is at the front of the of a word as in this word y et yet why is it the front so it's acting as a consonant making its y sound we have a little way that we can remember our vowels it's a song and it talks about why as well do you remember the song that we did yesterday we said and you can have your y in your hand to do this we touch each one with the y and we say a e i o u are vowels that i know you've heard but why is only a vowel when it's not at the start of a word. So if this was a word, which we know it's not, if Y is at the start, it says Y, so it is a consonant. If it's here, it's a vowel. If it was over here, it's a vowel. If it's at the end, it's a vowel. But if that's at the beginning, it is not a vowel. And when it's not a vowel, it says Y. In today's lesson, our new content is that we're going to try and solve the confusion between some letters that are commonly reversed and confused by kids. Is it a B? Is it a D? How do you know? Well, there's a little trick that we can use and we go like this. And the idea is that um, this is my bed. So here's the bed posts and the beds in the middle. You can imagine like somebody with their pillow. And we say, when I go to bed, I like peace and quiet. And the idea is that one hand is it's going to look like, you know how the bee has a straight line, there's the bedpost, and there's where the person will put their head. And the D has the second bedpost. If we look right here, there's what I was talking about. So the B, the bedpost, and then he's got his head on the circle part of the B. The E is like it where his body would be. And then the D, there's that second bedpost there. And here's our hands. So we put our hands together and we can always know that the B is going to be the left hand and the D is going to be the right. And the one trick about this is when you do this, you want your fingers uh, pointed towards you. That's then you'll know you're doing it right. And we say, here's my B, here's my D. When I go to bed, and we turn it upside down so our fingers are pointing away. And now we have a way to know what the P looks like and what the Q looks like. Um, I like peace and quiet. So let's do it all together, ready? When I go to bed, I like peace and quiet. So I'd like the teacher to have a B and a D and a P. And on mine, um, it's a QU. So I, I would like you to have the B, the D, the P, and the Q. And on mine it says P Q U. And I would like you to point to one of the one of these four symbols, teacher. And then, student, you're gonna tell the teacher what letter it is. Is it a B, a D, a P, or a Q? And you can use your bed when I go to bed and look at is it look is that look like a B or does that look like a D? And then you go upside down and is it a P or a Q? So try that now and then come back to me. And it's just a little one minute activity. In the next part of the lesson, we're going to focus on one sound. It might be a consonant or it might be a vowel. You can find out. I'm going to read a list of words and this superstar sound that we're going to focus on comes up in every single word. Let's see if you can find it. So here we go. The first word is it, sit, pit. Ip, tip, sip. What sound was in every single word? If you want, teacher, if your student needs to hear it one more time, you can read it. And when your student guesses it, um, you can start the video again. Did you guess it? That's the sound. The vowel I, as in itchy, is the superstar of the day. This is the list of words that I just read out. And what I'd like you to do is could you circle every time I comes up? I, you don't have to read the words, just circle the letter I, the I. Do that now. 
So let's really think about this sound. Eh. Let's put our fingers on our throats and feel, is it a vibration? Is it a motor on or motor off when we make this sound? Eh. And in contrast, let's do a motor off one. Eh. I feel a vibration when that one happens. Eh. Do you feel it? Now let's think about what's happening here. Eh. And let's do a sound as, as just a contrast. So as in snake. And now let's do I. So you see how the lips pull back on on I. And they go to, they, um, it's a different first. Let's try comparing I and V as in violin. Eh, See how the lips close up for v, eh, So what's happening when we're making i? Eh? Are the lips open or closed? Eh, they're open. Okay, where's the tongue in your mouth when you make i? Eh? Eh, you and your teacher can compare that right now. Eh, in my mouth, it's at the front. Eh, touching my teeth, my bottom teeth. Eh. And vocal cords are on. Now let's make a card to remember this sound. So can you take out a blank card? And we're going to write the letter I, a small I, in the middle. And then we'll put a capital I on the bottom so it'll look like that. Can you do that right now? So we know that I makes I. I'm going to make my little keyword be I is a, it's a little picture that we use for itchy. And then I would write itchy at the top. And then your teacher can show you how to do this, but um, you put I and then that's the short vowel sign. So you know that's the short sound for I. And then we know that there's more than one sound that I can make. It can also make the long I sound. It can say its name and it does that in ice. So I would draw a little ice cube and my teacher would tell me how to spell ice. And then when it makes a long ice sound, we make a straight line there. So for many, many lessons, we're only going to use I when it makes the itchy sound. But we do want to be correct and we know there are two sounds it can make. Now we're moving on to the magnetic letter tile drill. So grab your tiles. And I'm going to say that your first sound is S. What letter makes the sound S? Can you repeat that sound? Find that sound, the symbol that makes that sound, and pull it to the, your workspace here. Okay, I hope you got it. What makes the sound I? The second sound in your word is I. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the right tile and pull it to the middle and put it right after your first one, which was so now you have s and i. Okay. The last sound in your word is t. Can you repeat that sound? Now what letter makes the sound t? Find that letter and bring it to the middle. And then I want you to tap each tile and say the whole word. Okay, we'll do one more and you'll see that teacher there's, I put, I always put more words on there and different students move through the lesson at, at a different pace. So if you feel like there's time to do more, you totally can. So you can take your tiles, put them back in the right spot. So you have your rainbow shape all ready to go. And I'm going to say your first sound is P. Can you repeat that sound? What letter makes the sound P? Find it and bring it to your workspace. The second sound in your word is A. Ah. Can you repeat that? What letter makes the sound A? Ah? Find that letter and bring it to your workspace. So now we have P and A. Ah. Okay, your last sound is T. Can you repeat that? 
what letter makes the sound t? Find that letter, bring it to your workspace, and now tap each sound and say the whole word. It's time to read your word list, and it's okay to tap it, say it. So you could say b at, and then blend the whole thing together, or you can just just read the word as a complete word if you can. You don't have to tap it, say it if you can read the whole thing. Okay, do that now and then come back to me. Now it's time to read some connected text. So take out that sheet and you can read it. And then when you're done, your teacher will let you see the pictures and you guys can talk about what the story meant. You can do that now. Now it's time for the magnetic letter tile spelling drill. So get your tiles. And I'm going to tell you that your word is sin. Can you repeat that word? Now let's use it in a sentence. How could we use sin in a sentence? Make up a sentence and tell your teacher right now. What's the first sound that you hear in the word sin? Find the tile that matches that sound and pull it to the middle. What's the second sound in the word sin. Find that tile and bring it to the middle. What is the last sound that you hear in the word sin? Find the correct tile and bring it to the middle. Now you've got three tiles there and we're going to tap each letter and we're going to say the sound it makes. And then we're going to underline it and say the whole word. Do that now. This is where pacing comes in. So we want to have about 15 minutes in each of the different sections of the lesson. So 15 minutes on drills, 15 minutes on reading and teaching new content, and 15 minutes on writing. So teacher, if you feel like you have time to do an extra word with the magnetic letter, letter tiles, then feel free to do so. And if not, then let's move on. The next thing we're going to do is some finger tapping and tracing and writing. So you'll need to have a pencil and your lined paper. I'll say your word is pin. And what I want you to do is I want you to, um, I'll use my hand just so you can see it. I'd like you to trace the sound. And so this is the letter that goes with that sound. And I'm going to trace it right on my hand. And then I'm going to say it as I'm doing it. So I would say p. I. Mm, and that gets all the sounds in my hand. And then I would say the whole word. Pin. So I'll give you that one. And then I would write it down. So let's try that together with a new word. Your word is bit. So on a part of your body, trace the letters in the word and say the sounds as you do it. So what's the first sound in bit? I'm going to do it this way so you can't see. And the second one and say the sound, and the third sound in bit. Okay, and then write the word with your pencil. Okay, this time let's try and tap it out. That's our other method. So when we tap, um, it's our, our thumb is involved all the time, and we're just tapping across. Um, things will be reversed because I'm facing you, so you want, always want to be tapping left to right. Uh, so your teacher can make sure that's happening. I'll say your word is lip. How would you tap out lip? I'd say the sound that you hear in it. First sound and you'd say the sound. Second sound and third sound. And have your teacher like make sure that you're verbalizing it as you say the sounds. Okay. And then write the word lip. You're keeping track of the time and we're down to our last activity. This is connected writing. So we're going to write some sentences. I always read all three possibilities to my student. And then if we have time, we could write all three. Or if there's less time in the class, um, then you can just choose if the student's going to write one, two or three sentences. So student, here's your possibilities. The dog and cat fit on the mat. Or the big pig did a jig. Or Pam and the dog can nap. Oh, sorry, Pam and the dog nap. So which one would you like to do? And teacher, you're going to have the, uh, the answer sheet there so that you can read the sentence and keep track of it.
So you pick the sentence and your teacher can read it again for you. And we want you to write it with your pencil on the line and be sure to start way over on the left side. If you have line paper, there'll be a little red line that goes all the way down the paper. And I always say, bring your pencil back to that red line. Okay, come to me when you're done and we're gonna check our work. Once you finish writing a sentence, it's time to do chops. And remember that chops, there's five letters in that word, C-H-O-P-S. And each letter reminds us of something that we're going to do to make sure that our writing's correct. C stands for capital. Did you put a capital at the start of your sentence? If not, correct it now. And if there's a name of a person, such as Pam, if you did that sentence, then you would capitalize Pam, although it's at the start, so she could get a capital anyway. H is for handwriting. So how did you do on your handwriting? Was it tidy? Was there one finger space in between each word? Did it stay on the line? Those are all things we look for. O stands for out loud. So read the sentence out loud to your teacher. P stands for punctuation. Did you end with a period? If you did, good job. If not, make sure you correct that. So put it in. And then the last thing is your teacher can show you the sentence and you can check the spelling yourself word by word. So do that now. If there's time, you can do one more sentence. And if not, then we'll just do a quick review and that will be it. So in this lesson, we learned a new way that we are going to remember um, B and D and P and Q, how, would, how to write them. So what do we say? We say, when I go to bed, I like peace and quiet. Now you try it. Okay. We also reviewed the difference between a consonant and a vowel. So I'm going to point and you tell me if it's a consonant or a vowel. Okay. Teacher, you can check. Okay, and then what's the difference between a consonant and vowel? Remember that the vowel are the sounds that are very open. They go on, to, they go on forever and nothing's stopping them. The lips don't stop them. The tongue doesn't stop them. There's nothing in the way of them. And today we had a focus on the letter I and the sound of I. What sound does I make? Did you say it? And we have a keyword that helps us to remember that. Itchy. So that's it for today. Great job, everybody. And I'll see you in lesson number three. Remember that we always give homework um, and the homework will be work on your sight words. So you want to read your sight words once daily and write them once daily. So you could have your parent say your word is the, and then you would write it for the writing part. But you could just go through the list and just read them on your own. And you also want to do the site, the short vowel drill where you're going apple, ah, apple, ah. And each one get is done five times. And that drill, it only takes about two minutes, but it is a really important thing to do at this stage in the game. So try and do sight words and short vowel drill once daily. See you in lesson three. Anna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy.